conversation about police brutality and the entrenched racism in our society and start talking about a thematically related but logically irrelevant issue. Like Syrian refugees coming into our city to commit terrorism, say we're not only a tolerant society but far too much so. Add some leading questions like, if the government asked you to house two Syrian refugees today and they started telling you to wear a burqa, would you stay? Ignore the social climate that creates refugees in the first place. Ignore the plight of the majority of refugees and equate black people with extremists. Mention a black president. Whatever you do, ignore the specific points of the original conversation about police brutality. Subtlety is your enemy. Two, deny your privilege. Give examples of white, straight, cis, middle-class men going through hardship and pretend that privilege is absolute, not relative. So your first world problems prove your lack thereof. And to top it off, argue that minorities get special treatment now because of quotas and PC language requirements. Three, present logical fallacies as facts. The naturalistic fallacy is a good one. Take a conversation about accepting homosexuality and start talking about Animal Planet documentaries and your biology textbook. This is how nature intended for people to have sex. Pretend that sexuality is only about sex and the body parts combined. Start talking about how paedophilia is becoming recognized as a sexuality and soon, down the slippery slope, we'll start having paedophilic parades. Four, claim a tolerant view but set conditions. You're not a racist, but <laughs> you'd feel uncomfortable if your daughter brought home a black man. It's not that you have anything against gay people, but you just don't like the way some of them parade their pride like it's something to be happy about. You respect women, just not the ones that don't respect themselves and wear miniskirts. Labor these points, paraphrase them in as many ways as you can think of, because they're the most reasonable sounding arguments you have to offer. Five, be a hypocrite when it suits your means. Argue that beauty standards are not oppressive because women can choose not to conform to them, but claim their underarm hair is disgusting and that it's unnatural for women to have large muscles. Argue that black women with weaves are betraying their roots, but call the afro unprofessional. Argue that bills should be split 50-50, but it's a turn off when a woman earns more than you. Argue that gay men are not real men, but if they want to be respected as such, they should act more like men. Six, make up statistics to justify your point. Like, 90% of crime in the US is committed by black people, so of course the police are off. If asked where these statistics come from, cite The Onion or The Daily Mail. <laughs> Seven, denounce your debate partner's source of information without sound or specific reasons. Tell them you've had enough of experts from organizations with acronyms. You trust advice from real people with real jobs like the Sun columnists. Call them uninformed because they've been trusting the wrong sources of information. Speak about the importance of distinguishing evidence from propaganda, thus implying that you are able to do this while your debate partner is not. Eight, patronize, infantilize, or otherwise insult your debate partner. Lest you run out of points related to the argument itself, or if you feel threatened by it, resort to attacking the ego of the other person. Point to their social class, level of education, their accent, financial situation, or something from their past. Or nine, police their tone of voice. Tell them they are too emotional, their emotions getting in the way of thinking straight. Alternatively, if they appear calm and confident, call them arrogant. And if they are female, call them a bitch. Or ten, tell the person how to feel. Point to those experiencing extreme misfortune or greater degrees of the discrimination they complain of. Compare this to your own problems. Tell them they are overreacting and must be grateful for their lot in life. 
This way, you assume authority over what constitutes a valid emotion, implying that what you believe happened to them is more important than their lived experience. 11. Beat them with experience. Make a point of the age difference between you. Tell them that when you were their age, you used to be just as idealistic. Tell them they'll change their mind and should have this conversation with you in 10 years' time. Play on the premise that experience is quantity, so their worldview is bound to expire with age. Make sure there are no older people who disagree with you. If you must address the caveat that you do not, in fact, have any meaningful experience with black or gay people. Mention that time at university, or that time you went on holiday to London. And 12. Listen always to respond, not to understand the other argument. Think of what you could say next while the other person is talking. Interrupt them. You may not have anything useful to say, but at least this way, your present worldview will remain intact. At least you can continue living inside the cocoon of unchecked privilege, continue living in a single story world in which the LGBT are either closeted or filthy, blacks are either presidents or criminals, and women are either sexy, hormonal, or secretly owning a dick. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs>